Hello and welcome back and we're still talking about WD Red. That's right, as soon as I heard this yesterday, I won't lie, I got a bit of a headache. Um, let's talk about this. So, WD Red, there's been this big thing, just to keep you up to speed, uh, where it was noticed last year that WD had started rolling uh, Drive Managed Shingle Magnetic Recording or DMSMR onto this series of WD Red drives between 2TB and 6TB. These were the serial number, uh, sorry, the model IDs that ended in the letters AX, the older generation being the RX series. Now, it was just the 2TB to the 6TB, so that's your 2, your 4, and your 6TBs in between. I think the 3s, whether that was part of it, I'm not sure, because 3's always been a funny drive. But what happened after that is a lot of people started noticing that these drives SMR had been utilised in RAID and you shouldn't really use an SMR drive in a traditional RAID from Synology, QNAP, whatever because they're not designed for the um, repetitive read and write and delete and basically re uh, RAID actions because of the architecture of shingle magnetic recording and how it reclaims space later on doing calculations afterwards which is no good for a constantly on system with no downtime. But um, they were kind of caught out on this and they got a huge amount of furor about it. And I mean, there's a, of course, part of it is the fact that people have utilized SMR on NAS drives, but it's more the idea that WD seemingly tried to hide it. A lot of people were a bit upset about it, to say the least. The fact that they were pointing at, you know, trying to make a quick buck perhaps, because some of these drives had lesser platters inside, then their, <clears throat> um, their CMR, conventional magnetic recording alternatives, also known as PMR, uh, perpendicular magnetic recording. But WD listened to a bunch of people, and this is their solution to the problem. Now, whether you like it or not, this is the way it's going forward, so it'd be great to hear what you think in the comments. But the idea is that those drives that are um, drive-managed shingle magnetic recording, they are still remaining. They're still there, the two the 3, the 4, and the 6TB drive are still there. But the non-pro series of drives, so these are the ones in the middle, are going to be known as WD+. Now, these will cover 1TB, 8TB, 10TB, and going upwards through their range. These are drives that will be utilising CMR, not SMR, this middle new plus series. Of course, the Pro Series at the end has never really had a problem. They've all been CMR-based drives, but it's this rebrand in the middle of all the drives that are still CMR, but not Pro Series drives. So now WD Red, which used to be WD Red and WD uh, Red Pro, is now WD Red, WD Red Plus, and WD Red Pro. Now, if I had to have a guess, I think slowly but surely, this one on the end is going to disappear. I think that's something that's going to happen over the years. It's just a prediction, but I can totally see that coming because this is something WD are going to want to put behind them in a big, big way. And this plus series means of differentiating for users because I think a lot of the biggest problem of this is that users felt duped. And WD are trying to resolve this by saying, look, we're trying to be what we can do with these drives. Now, one could argue, why do they not just put WD Red SMR, WD Red CMR. And I think a lot of that is because it's too technical for their branding. But also, that would be like putting their hand up and going, yeah, we, we screwed the pooch on this, guys. Um, but this is kind of the latest development in this. Now, I can only really give you my own opinion because we already know about these drives and what they're capable of. We did a whole bunch of testing on these drives in NAS environments and read environments and write environments. We did 95% full, we did near empty drives, RAID rebuilds on both of them, as well as how long it takes to build a drive generally. The AX series of drives, that is those um, SM, uh, the 2 to 6TB AX series of drives, that little bracket here that lives in the WD Red, not Plus series, the performance on those is still very, very good. But once you think about rebuilding, once you think about sustained read-write over extended periods where the drive in the system doesn't have time to reclaim um, the space that it's losing by a heavy write, then that's where your problems hit. So they did have a great read and write, but there was no denying that in raid rebuilds, they suffered quite badly. Now, remember, just because there's an AX on the end of the drive, and hopefully WD's graphic has been on the screen at some point, just because there's an AX on the end doesn't mean that it is an SMR drive. Remember, 
the AX series, that's the two letters at the end of the model ID, in 8, 10, 12, and presumably 14 terabytes, all of those are AX drives, which are CMR, okay? So just remember, two to, four, uh, two to six, non, uh, WD Red two to six, eh, meh, ending in AX, but if they are RX, that's the older generation, which generally has a lower read write, but does not have this drive managed single magnetic recording uh, snafu. Let's try to be polite about this where possible. But what do you guys think about this differentiation? I think you guys know my feelings just by this video. I think it's a good idea to separate between them. I don't think it's extreme enough. And I don't know if you guys have noticed, but a lot of those WD Red SMR drives have been pulled from a lot of NAS brands uh, compatibility lists. Now, that's something we've known about for a while, and they're still good drives to use, but there's no avoiding that you wouldn't do something like that unless you were a little bit unconfident uh, within uh, the device itself or within the RAID environment of your consumer's data. But let me know what you guys think. Is this smart or is it not? Let me know in the comments. Click like if you've enjoyed this video. Click subscribe to learn more, and I'll see you next time.